place and in the shadow of the world's tallest building for the final act in our annual quest for you know what. The Metrex trophy for the world's strongest man to be won this year in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. A city enjoying a huge economic boom, the ultimate symbols of which are the Petronas Towers, 88 storeys high, reaching 452 metres into the sky. A triumph of vision and engineering. But we're concerned about something far more basic, raw power. For years, this event has been a Scandinavian monopoly, but for the first time in a decade, that stranglehold could be broken. After qualifying events around the globe and here in Kuala Lumpur, we're left with just 10 men. From Finland, Juha Mati Rasanen. From Lithuania, Zdrunas Zavikas. From Poland, Marius Puzinowski. Also from Poland, Jarek Dimik. From Latvia, Raymond Bergmanis. From the USA, Johnny Perry. From Great Britain, Gregor Edmonds. From Canada, Hugo Girard, from Sweden, Magnus Samuelsson, and the defending champion from Norway, Spent Carlsen. This will be the most competitive final in memory. Zidruna Savita from Lithuania, 27 year old, 4 meter 90, 145 kilograms. Magnus Samuelsson, Sweden, 32 years old, 2 meters tall, 150 kilos. Gregor Edmonds, Scotland, 25 years of age, 194 centimeters tall, 120 kilos. Raymond Bergmanis from Latvia, age 36, height 1 meters 92, 139 kilos. Johan Kirasanen from Finland, age 28, height of 1 meter 98, 132 kilos. I'm Jaroslav Dimek from Poland. 31 years old, 1 meter 82, 120 kilos. Amigo Gerard from Canada, 30 years old, 1 meter 83, 150 kilos. Marius Pijanowski from Pola, 25 years old, 1 meter 86, 130 kilograms. Johnny K, North Carolina, USA, 29 years old. 6'6", six six, 175 kilos. Sven Carlson from Norway. I'm 35 years old, weighing 141 kilo, and I'm 188 tall. And I am the world's strongest man. Viking power! I am world's strongest man, as I say, for now, and they have to prove me wrong. But uh, as it goes for today with the first two events, I just hope uh, if I get more than 14 points today, it's okay. And that's... Uh, according to schedule. Who do you think are your main rivals this year? Uh, if you look at the events by itself, uh, it would be Hugo and Marius, I guess. And of course, you can never leave out the Swede. Uh, we had so many fights during the last years, and uh, you still haven't been able to beat me in this competition, though. So. We begin in Medeca Square, the spiritual home of Malaysia's colonial past. And there's no question here of bowling the guys a couple of looseners to let them get their eyes in. We're hitting them with a big one from the word go, the flip and drag. This huge tyre, 385 kilograms, 860 pounds, to be flipped to the halfway point where it's then left. And this mighty anchor, which could have come off the Ark Royal, 300 kilograms, 660 pounds, then has to be dragged 
to the end of the course. This really is a leg, arm and lung-busting start. Commentary on the final of the world's strongest man from Paul Dickinson. Please welcome what a lineup it is for this year's final. The first heat of the flip and drag being led out by Zidrinus Savikas of Lithuania. In his own right, a world champion in the sport of powerlifting. Next to him, the very tall Juha Rasanen of Finland. A lot of nerves out here this morning. The temperature rising all the time. Lithuania, Zidrinus Savikas has got a lot to prove. Over 20 stones in body weight, a massive man. Juha Rasanen continuing the great tradition of Finnish strongmen in this final. Next to him, a former champion, Magnus Samuelsson, two meters tall, looking bigger and bigger every year he competes. And another big man, they're all big, let's face it, Hugo Girard with the biggest chest I've ever seen. Close to 70 inches, won his heat easily. And finally, the lightest man in this year's final, Jarek Dimek of Poland. Second in Europe's strongest man competition this year. A first five in the flip and drag, and that giant tyre is bound to be a huge obstacle to all of them. They have to flip it four times, then race on for the huge anchor and chain. This year's final underway, Dimek away well, Girard away well, Samuelson not away too well. On the far side, Savikas is going pretty well too. There he is. Gaining an experience all the time. This is neck and neck. Savikas came through strongly. Dimek as well. And now this giant anchor and chain. Over 300 kilograms in weight. Dimek is flying. This is amazing. Savikas in second place, but moving ahead, Samuelson coming through strongly. Demek has come to a grinding halt. Savikas glancing across at the tall Swede in the yellow. Now, who's going to get it? This is going to be so, so close. Oh, Samuelson's gone down, and that is fantastic. Savikas has finished. Samuelson about half a metre to go. He finishes second. What a start for the Lithuanian. What a start to this final. There's still 15 seconds left on the clock. Demek has only got about half a metre left. Hugo Girard trying to finish ahead of the pole, but he won't. Rasanen has walked off the course already. Zavikas, though, will be watching the clock to see what his time was. Another five great athletes to go yet. Hugo Girard absolutely down and out. What a start. Do you think uh, in the next race they can beat you? Uh, I hope they can't, but see. The, uh, the, the anchor, the pull, was very hard? Very hard. After tire flip, it's very hard work. Latvian Raymond Bogmanis in lane one, three in times he's competed one, in Olympic, Olympic weightlifting. Raymond Bergmanis! looking very very confident during the heats next to him the giant figure of johnny perry one of the heaviest men in this year's final quietly confident one suspects marius kujanowski of poland he's not big but boy is he muscular Superhuman efforts in the heat. In lane four, this the defending champion, Sven Carlson. He won the title in Zambia. Can he do it all over again here in, in Kuala Lumpur? And what a moment for young Great Gregor Britain. Edmonds, representing Edmund. Scotland and Great Britain. Second in Britain's Strongest Man, but now in his very first final. Hands on tire. Douglas Edmonds, the referee gets everybody ready. Hooray! The time to beat, 46.55 by Zidrunas Savikas. Away we go, Sven Carlson in pursuit of a second title. Gregor Edmonds flipping it over. One more to go for this man. What a start in the defense of his title by the Norwegian. Kuzhanovsky is there. So is Johnny Perry and so is Gregor Edmonds. But look at Kuzhanovsky coming through. Sven Carlson is fading. Gregor Edmonds is going like a train. Fantastic for the Scot, but the pole is going to win this, surely. Oh, that is brilliant. Just a little slip there, but that is the fastest time. Now, come on, Gregor. Keep going. 
6.55 by Zavikas. He's blown that, but if he can just keep going, and what a turnaround in form for Sven Carlsen. So fast after the tyre. Now, come on, Gregor, you've got to finish. Time is ticking away towards a minute. It's still a good start for the Scot. He's finished now. Well done, Gregor Edmonds. Kuzhanovsky was absolutely incredible. Only five seconds left before they blow the whistle. Sven Carlsen fading badly in this event. That is it. Well done to Gregor Edmonds. And Kuzhanovsky has won that by a mile. Oh, Gregor, what a start for you, son. But the Poles have certainly found a new star in Marius Kuzhanovsky. He grimaces, he's breathing hard. But that was such a superb effort. And maximum points to Poland. Happy? Yes. Uh, only first events. Maybe next. <laughs> very good. Maybe. But you were very quick there. The, uh, the drag of the anchor was easy. <laughs> I don't know. Only training. Very good training. Flip and drag. No problem. Not bad start, eh? <laughs> Great. You beat the world's strongest man. Uh, no, yeah, I'm not. No, no, you beat, no, you beat the world's strongest man. Yeah, he's got many good events to come, though. The running races are good for me. Where do you see static events? You see Sven come to life. Sven, that looked like it hurt a bit. Oh, yeah, really bad. It was so easy, but the chain was just stuck to the ground today. But it's just one event. Six to go. Not so much Viking power at the moment, though. No, not now. But I will be back later. Soon to come near. I event near you. Well, the pre-competition favourites, Gerard and Carlson, back in sixth and seventh. A good start for Gregor Edmonds. All eyes on the pole, Kuzhinovsky. Event two, the farmer's walk. Carry these two giant anvils, 120 kilograms each, that's 265 pounds, down the course, back, and again, 75 meters in total. That's longer than any previous event in World's Strongest Man. And the winner, obviously, is the guy who gets there first. Magnus Samuelson, you're one of the favorites for this event. What are the key elements here in being successful? First, you make sure you have a perfect grip. And what I do, I, I put my, my, as, as much of my finger around the grip as I can, then I squeeze my thumb around my fingers to make sure that it stays in this position. You pick up uh, the, the, the anvils and try to hold them as much as you can apart. You start off with uh, small strides and then with a pretty high speed, then you just make the strides longer and longer and just try to keep your head up the whole time. Take your you go, Gerard, nearest the camera. There's Yarek wearing the green shirt and it sounds simple when Magnus Samuelson describes the grip but you, when your shoulders are being torn out of their sockets by the weight which equates to a small motorcycle in each arm that is unbelievable Girard of Canada Canada's strongest man for many years now just in the lead there's only a couple of meters between them Girard is going well one more turn then 25 meters and this is a real sprint Oh, Girard's down, so is Demek though. So Girard let off the hook there just a little bit. Look at the strain on Girard's face and the grip's gone again. This could be a case of the tortoise and the head. Demek's coming on stronger. He's almost being stretched to the ground. Look at his arms and his shoulders sloping forward. He's only about four meters from the end and Girard's gone down again. Oh, what a drama. Demek's got it, I can't believe it. Fantastic performance by both men. Yarek Dimek, 54.34. He's in the lead. A little bit tired. That was a good race, yes? I think so. My strategy, strategy was not too fast, but to end. Okay. Raymond Bergmanis on the far side, the Latvian up against Sven Carlsen, the champion from last year. 
and these early stages of the final so crucial to make sure you've got solid performances and both men are going well Sven Carlsen turning just ahead of Bergmanis and remember that time by Demek 54-34 that's what they, everybody has to try and beat the grip is crucial here no man has dropped it so far he's just wobbling a bit is the champion and look at Bergmanis oh he's got as well shades of the previous pairing it's hurting like hell out there and Bergmanis almost toppled over Carson coming through now can they beat the time Bergmanis is going to finish no he's not there's a meter to go the Lapian's done it he goes into the lead tremendous performance by Bergmanis He's actually beaten the time of Demek by four seconds, and Carlson is all over the place. He's still got three metres left, way outside the time set, and that is it as far as the defending champion is concerned. Whoa, he's just broken the world record for throwing his belt into the crowd as well. A lot of passion out there, but at the moment, Bergmanis is the man. Gregor Edmonds found the going tough. He couldn't complete the course managing just 33 meters. Johnny Perry of the USA did go the distance, 53.62 for him. But an immense performance by the huge Finn, completing the course in 40.07 seconds. It was after that that disaster struck for the former world's strongest man, Magnus Samuelsson. Obviously in considerable pain, he couldn't lift the anvils for a second time and couldn't complete the course. Was it the recurrence of that previous injury? Is the bicep gone? No. It's my good one. Good to be off. Just one pair to go on the far side, Savikas and Pushinovsky of Poland in the Hooray! orange vest. Great time by Juha Rasinen, just over 40 seconds. And Pushinovsky's gone off like a train. Look at the muscles in that guy's neck and his arms and everywhere else if it comes to that. Zavikas is going well too. Uh, this guy is actually running. This is unbelievable. It's more like a sprint, a little touchdown. The clock is only just over 22 seconds. I swear to goodness, he hasn't breathed. A little touchdown there, but straight up. Now, come on. This could be a phenomenal time. It's just over 33 seconds. That is simply unbelievable. He wants to know what the time is. Savika's still out on the course. He's got a chance of coming third, which he does. But what about the leader, Pujanovsky? Oh, I've never seen anything what? like it. Yes, sir. And again... He is so, so fit, he hardly breaks sweat. Congratulations. It was a good race, yes? Thanks. I'm happy. Uh, second event, first, is very good. Oh, it's a very strong event. Oh. And you were first and now third, so you're happy too? Yeah. It's my... Favorite event. Not so happy, but good start today. But what of Samuelson? Perhaps the most recognizable face in the world of strongman, had the former champion's challenge ended for another year. As I turned the last time, my leg kicked into one of the cylinders and uh, that overstretched my, my left bicep. And then as, when I picked them up again, like the pain just get worse and worse by the second I was holding on to them so in the end I I just walked away from it you walked away with just two points at the bottom there as you can see another victory for Pujanovsky ahead of Rasinen and Savikas and is this the changing of the guard Hugo Girard in seventh place and amazingly Sven Carlsen in ninth I learned something you know strange thing happens in this competition so at least I'm gonna come back tomorrow 200% and fight for my right again to be world strongest man. Because nothing is over before the fat lady sings, and I haven't seen her yet, so. So who is Marius Pujanowski, a 24-year-old former top amateur boxer who recently has had more than his fair share of problems? I started boxing when I was 15. 
After seven years, I was quite good. And in 2000, I was training for the Olympic squad. I liked boxing, but I didn't like being punched. So I took up strongman. Last year, I had a car accident and someone was badly hurt. It was my fault. I went to prison. Inside, there were good people and some bad people. They wanted to humiliate me. Now I have the chance to show them. I am very determined, and when I was released, I had four months to prepare. No disco, no play, just training and more training. After two months, I became European champion, and now everything is possible. So it's the third event, the squat lift. Last year in Africa, it was a safari truck. This year in Kuala Lumpur, it's six huge tires that weigh 275 kilograms, that's 600 pounds, that have to be squatted all the way down and then all the way up again as often as possible. And obviously after the first two events, Marius Pujanowski of Poland won both. So a question for Jamie Reeves, former world's strongest man himself. How do you assess this extraordinary man? Um, well, he's got off to a very good start. But these first two events have been, one's been dragging heavy weights, one's been moving with weights. So they've both been mobility events. The squat's a classic weightlifting, powerlifting event. And it's just basically about being static and seeing how much strength you've got in your legs and back. And although he's had a fabulous start and he's doing well, I think this will be the acid test. This will see what he's really made of. And I think it'll make or break his attempt at winning the world's strongest man. Johnny Perry from the United States. Amazingly, he said he slimmed down this year, so his arms only measure 24 inches around. But it's legs that count here, legs and back. 275 kilos, over 600 pounds, squatted as many times as possible. The judges paying careful attention to how far down they go as well. Little touch, and away we go, that's his first. Breathing so important. Breathe in. Big squat. And breathe out. That's three. Well, certainly Johnny Perry weighed in at about 26, 27 stone last year. He's a little bit lighter now. And he says a little fitter too. You heard what Jamie Reeves had to say. This could sort the men out from the boys. This is solid strength. Six. Looks to be actually getting a little easier for Perry. He's getting into his rhythm, but taking a long time in between each squat. He's been going for well over 40 seconds now, so a bit of endurance kicking in as well. Deep breath, somebody is shouting in the crowd. You've got to get oxygen to those muscles as fast as you can in between each lift. That's eight. This is a good effort by the American. Former professional wrestler, super strong man, nine, and I think he's had enough, but that is a good target for the rest to go for. Johnny Perry scores nine squats. Now he can get away into the shade and have a rest, but there's still some good guys to come. Um, but it looked like every ounce of power you had left was going into that last one. Yeah, every ounce of power I had left. I probably borrowed some from you and a little bit of everybody here, so uh, I just had to get it off on me, so I had to come up. It was killing me. So uh, I'm pleased with it so far. I was expecting six. I was hoping six. Now it was good, so I'm pleased. Well, Yarek Dimmick found it impossible to lift the tyres once. No repetitions, no points. Magnus Samuelsson did continue because this wasn't an arm event, but he managed just one repetition, as did Gregor Edmonds. He just didn't have enough leg power to get it up for a second time. Rassanen from Finland, he managed three repetitions. After him, Raymond Bergmanis, three times an Olympic weightlifter. He managed six. This really was hard. Hugo Girard, though, made it look easy. Twelve repetitions for the Canadian. After him, it was time for some Viking power. So Sven Carlson, amazingly, down in ninth place after the first two events. But this, I feel, is a banker for him. He's always performed well in the squat lifts in previous competitions. 
And so he should. He's a former European powerlifting champion. Look. 12 lifts by Hugo Four. Girard is the target. And notice how far down yes. his back that bar is. That's good powerlifting technique. And Two. this is a good rhythmical start. Three. He's got knee wraps on. He's got a very tight Four. super suit on underneath that T-shirt. And five looking good for the Norwegian. Six. Very wide stance. Seven. So, so strong, Sven Carlsen. And totally Eight. under control at the moment. Now, can he go past Eight. nine reps, which is Johnny Perry? Eight. Yes, he can. Eight. Now chasing the leader. Eight. One more to go. Eight. He's equaled him. And that is the lead. Just what the Norwegian wanted. Just what the crowd wanted as well. 14 lifts. Any more? No, that is it. But Sven Carlsen has set a prodigious total. Eases out. And that bar digging in across the shoulders. Sven Carlsen now knows he's got a good total up there. They say it's a little bit heavier than last year and need four more, so hope it's enough. Just have to pray because I really need it now. What he needed was for Zavikas and Prizhanovsky to fall well short of that total. And the Lithuanian really struggled. He managed just six repetitions. Take your position. Well, we heard what Jamie Reeves said right at the beginning of this event. Are this would test Marius yes. Prizhanovsky to the limit. What? He's a tremendous all-round strength athlete, but nobody is sure about his squatting ability. And what a total has been set by Sven Carlsen. The overall leader goes to two, but he's looking a little bit unsure, a little bit unsteady. Just adjusting his footwork there. This is a tricky event. Kuzhanovsky, that's four. This is not looking good for the pole. And when you consider that Girard has done 12, Johnny Perry's on nine, and a couple of other guys on six reps, this could be poor points for Puzhanovsky. The third event in the final, that is it. And at last we've seen a weakness in Puzhanovsky's armory. He's not unbeatable after all. The return of the old guard, Carlson and Girard taking first and second place, although this was the point when Magnus Samuelsson did call it quits because of that injury. Puzhanovsky and Zvikas still out ahead, but for Hugo Girard, so close on so many occasions, he's still right in there. you got to go all the way. It's three of them now, Five, uh, four more to go. So I just got to look forward, and that's the way to look at it. It's not a sprint, that's a marathon, and it's not over until the last event is done. So. Uh, Right now I'm happy with it, now I'm looking forward for the next one, if I can grab uh, some more point there, then uh, back on track. Well, we stay in downtown KL for our next event, one of the most familiar and traditional of all strong men competitions, the lorry pull. So Sven, how much is pulling a lorry technique and how much is its strength? I'll put it that way, if you don't do it the right way, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to get it to the finish line. So what's the right way? I try to, to use a lot of arm power with the rope, stay low as possible and get as much speed in the feet as possible. As soon as you get it rolling, it's going to become easier and easier as long as you can keep the momentum up. It's a power event, but if you do it the wrong way, you're going to have a hard time. Bin Tang Walk in central Kuala Lumpur, about to witness something that I don't think anybody's seen here before. This giant lorry's got to be pulled over the 30-metre course, and the first guy up, Gregor ready? Edmonds of Scotland and Great Britain. I just wonder how much longer Gregor is going to continue his strongman competition. He said he wants to go back to track and field and Highland Games, but he's absolutely delighted to be in this final. And so is Dad, referee Douglas Edmonds, who sent him on his way. There's a slight incline as we get towards the end. That is when everybody is going to feel the pain, the anguish, and everything else that goes along with this type of event. Fitness so important. It's not a sprint. It's not an 800-meter race. It's somewhere in between. 
and the agony of the lactic acid kicking into the legs and arms around about here has got to be overcome by sheer willpower and guts and determination. Greg is over the line, but the lorry has to be over the line as well. Another meter should do it. Come on, Greg, he's come to a grinding halt. Now, this is anguish at its worst. He just can't shift it. He's only got about six or seven inches to go. He's outside 60 seconds now, and there's Haney Koivunemi, his girlfriend. She finished second in World's Strongest Woman last year. We'll see her in this year's competition, and I don't think Gregor can believe the pain he suffered in the last meter of that competition. Unbelievable. Are you, all, are you, are you reasonably happy with that? When I know where I am, they'll be able to think about it. I don't know, John. Tell us how tough that was, then. It was actually easier than I thought it would be. But it was a long, it's long pull. Normally, I don't pull 25 metres normally, 30, so I wasn't expecting that last little bit. It was just a bit too far for Rassenden as well. 27.4 metres for the Finn. Raymond's Bergmanis did complete the course, though. 64.56 for the man from Latvia. Next up, it was Jarek Dimmick and 52.03 for the pole. And they kept getting quicker and quicker. Johnny Perry, biceps bulging, tattoos pumping, made it in 46.21. What was the hardest part about that? The hardest part? Pulling the truck. The last hit you see was terrible. Well, everybody agrees the last part of this contest is the worst. Now, Sven Carlson made a quantum leap up the scoreboard in the last event from ninth to fourth. Can he do it again? He's got to do it again if he's going to retain his title. Here we go. That lorry is not exactly thundering down the course, but it is moving smoothly. And this guy's done this competition so many times. Boats, planes, you name it, he's done it. And this is quick, 46.21, the leading time at the moment by Johnny Perry. Right at the beginning of this competition, you heard him say, you've got to pull with the arms, you've got to drive with the legs, you've got to stay low. And so far, so good for the Norwegian. Short, sharp steps. Coming up to 40 seconds, not very far to go, just a couple of metres, this is quick. And, oh, he's got it, yes he has. Just by 0.21 of a second, Sven Carlsen goes into the lead, but there are three competitors to go. For the time being, so far, so good for Carlsen. Into the lead. Happy with that? What's the lead? Lead, yes. I'm leading. You're leading. Yes! First! Yeah. Yeah. Yes! There's still life in you yet. Oh yeah. Viking power! That certainly was a great performance by Sven Carlson. Amazed to find himself in the lead. Next up, Hugo Girardo, Canada. Just a little bit upright in comparison to the Norwegian. 46 seconds is the target now. Look how wide this guy's shoulders are. He almost blanks out the truck when you look at him from the front. Massive arms, bigger than most people's legs. The short, sharp steps are working again. All the competitors have got this technique taped now. Hugo Girard, solid as a rock. The last bit of the course, though, the last 10 metres is definitely the hardest. Coming up to five metres to go. He's got about 10 seconds in the back. Can he keep it going? Oh, I think he might be. This is good from Girard. He's going to go into the lead, surely. Yes, he is. 44.84. And in actual fact, Carlson's time has been utterly destroyed. That is going to be hard to beat. There's his wife. Delight for the Canadian camp. And Hugo Girard is in the lead. Two more to go. Hopefully that'll be a winning time. I went out there, didn't bother about time, distance, just pull until it stopped. 
You're pretty proud with that, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yes. A big smile on the face ready? of Hugo Girard as Zidrunas Savikas, the it's penultimate ready. competitor, gets ready, leans into it. Now, this guy is a powerlifter, is used to shifting huge weights in the gym and in World's Strongest Man. But I bet he's never encountered anything like this before. In terms of body weight, slightly lighter than the Canadian, but we've already seen what a good competitor he is. He's lying in second place overall behind Pujanovsky. And that truck is moving, I can tell you. Savikas is going well. The legs pumping, the arms pulling like crazy. Now he's got to grit his teeth. Three metres to go. Two metres to go. This is going to be so, so close. 44.84 to beat. And he's done it. This is just getting better and better. Faster and faster. Being held up there by Jamie Reeves. 43.97 seconds. We have a new leader. Fantastic. Congratulations. You're the leader. Thanks. Very happy. I like this event. Do you think Marius can beat your time? He can beat, but after two minutes we see. We certainly will. Well, there aren't too many people in the world who can boast at being 20 stone in body weight with hardly an ounce of fat on them, but this guy can. A little slip there. Marius is away. Chasing the time of 43.97 by Savikas. Look at the arms working, the legs driving, taking slightly longer steps than everybody else. And the size of his biceps have got to be seen to be believed. Absolutely massive upper body strength. And he's going like a train. The last three competitors, well, we've seen a new leader virtually every time out. Now, can he do it? He's wobbling a bit at the moment. He's got to stay in a straight line, three metres to go. It's going to be so close again. And Zavikas is still in the lead. Pujanovsky goes into second. He's about half a second down, 44.38, but he's still up there. He's just realised he's got second place. What I know is that I give everything I have. I did my best and I'm coming second. This is good. I'm very happy with my time. So just how crucial would the lorry pull prove to be in determining the final outcome? Savikas and Pujanovsky re-establishing their superiority. Girard and Carlson now eight and ten points respectively behind the leader after what had been one of their favoured events. something new. The new is the venue, Putrajaya, the new administrative capital of Malaysia, which when it's completed in 2010, will have cost $10 billion to build, housing half a million people. And the old is our old friend here. In previous incarnations, the Africa Stone and the Dragon Stone of Wales, but now reincarnated as the Asia Stone. 175 kilograms, that's two of me, to be picked up and carried as far as possible up and down a 50 meter course. Now the world record for this is 107.5 meters. Can anybody in the field today eclipse that? Well, we'll soon find Edinburgh. out because Greg Redmonds is the first to go. The shield weighing in, as John was saying, 175 kilos, close to 400 pounds. That's around right about the size of a 500cc motorbike. But I've got a sneaking suspicion he's going to do pretty well at this one. He's got long, long arms and providing the grip is solid, and that's so important, and he keeps the shield high on the chest, who knows what he could do. 50 metres, the first target. Jamie Reeves, former world's strongest man from Sheffield, just keeping an eye on Gregor for safety's sake. Just one line to go over, a little touch, and away we go again. Looking solid, over 50 metres now for Gregor. No pressure going first, that may help him. He's just managing to peer over the top of that shield. In comes Jamie Reeves again. And now once fatigue starts, that's when it could get tricky. But that grip is utterly rock solid now. He's coming up to 100 metres. The world record John was talking about, the best we've ever seen, around about 107 metres. And Gregor is still going, his father in the background, watching anxiously. Down it 
goes at around 107 metres. That is a good performance by Gregor. Well done. You went into that in a very positive mood, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I think I was hiding it well then. Legs were like jelly from top pool yesterday. I think it could have went a lot further if it was fresher, but I did good doing that thing. The official measurement gives us 107.5 for Gregor. That equals the best we've ever seen with this piece of equipment. So now Juha Rasanen being helped there by Yuka Ahola. Both great fins. Ahola, of course, twice world's strongest man. And away Rasanen goes. Taller than Gregor Edmonds, slightly bigger in the chest as well. And like Edmonds, the grip absolutely rock solid. My goodness, he's really trotting down the course. The first 50 metres, well, he's just catching his breath now, just getting warmed up. I wonder if this could be another 100 metre run. The Shield Walk, a great favourite in World's Strongest Man for many, many years. Going back to the Husevel Stone that we saw in Iceland over a decade ago. Rassanen is going well. If he turns and goes 10 metres, he's going to beat Gregor Edmonds. So here he goes. Oh, this is great stuff from the Finn again. He's closing in on Gregor Edmonds' marker, and he's gone past it. He's got another couple of metres before it crashes to the ground. 112.35. Well, well, well. This is getting better and better, this event. When you got to the second turn, how much further did you think you could go? Maybe 10 metres. It's about very easy. So, you know, almost 90 metres, but then it's a little bit slower and slower. Now no, I'm happy. I hope uh, nobody can beat me. Two superhuman efforts, followed by a third. Bergmanis just getting ahead of Gregor Edmonds' total. Yarek Dimmick, human in comparison, 70.35 metres. And he was followed by Johnny Perry, 81.9 for the giant American. Sven Carlsen now. The Scandinavian strongmen have got a great tradition in any event involving lifting and walking long distances. And he's gone off at a pretty fast pace. But Carlsen needs big points. He's been disappointing so far in this final. He really is striding out. It's still very hot in Kuala Lumpur. It's a bit misty today, but the searing heat is going to take its toll eventually. Being cheered on by the crowd. Everybody knows what a great competitor Sven Carlsen is. But with three guys over 100 metres already, this competition is of such a high standard. And Carlsen is faltering. He's taking a breather, and this has never been good tactics in the past. We've seen that. It's so hard to get the momentum going once you stop. And he's struggling, he's down around the 79 metre mark. And once again, the defending champion has got a real problem. That is not good points for the Norwegian. And worse still for his great rival, the Canadian, Girard's challenge all but ending at the 68 metre mark. And when Zabikas let the stone go after 81 metres, the door was well and truly open for Pujanovsky. Well, this guy has been a revelation. We didn't know too much about him, he didn't appear in World's Strongest Man last year, but obviously his training has been going incredibly well. The hands clasped in front of him, wrapped across his chest, that giant stone weighing in at almost 400 pounds. And one can only imagine just what it feels like when it's digging in the arms, especially after about 100 metres or so. So the leader at the moment, still Juha Rasanen of Finland, 112.35. But Gregor Edmonds, he's in third place at 107.5. But Pujanovsky has been a revelation. I don't know who he's talking to in the crowd there, but he wants more cheers, that's for sure. These guys are not just strong, they love the crowd to support them as well. It really does help. He's got the stage all to himself, and now he's going for victory again. Oh, this is so, so easy. He's gone into the lead, and he's almost halfway up the course. I'm not sure he's smiling. It's half of a smile, half a grimace, and that is it. Thank you very much. Another victory, maximum points.
and Poland are very, very definitely in the lead. Another super performance by Marius. There's no stopping this guy. Superb, and he looks so cool, calm, and collected. Thank you very much and goodbye. 127.4 meters, and he made it look easy. It is true that in this event I am very strong and the stone is not a problem to me. It is easy for me to carry such a weight and so I am smiling. It was not feeling heavy. And he was smiling even more when he saw the scoreboard. Ten points again for the pole. And when you see that Svent Carlsen finished seventh there and that Pujanowski now has a five and a half point lead at the top, you realize there's going to be no repeat success for the huge Norwegian. Is that the end? That's the end of this battle, yeah. I will still come back next year, try to do better. But it wasn't mine to win this year, that's for sure. At least I'm going to try to finish off like a Viking warrior and maybe even finish in the top three. That battle isn't over yet. Beneath the Patronus Towers, the world's tallest building, the outcome for the battle of the world's strongest man will be decided. Two events to go. The first is the deadlift. How many times can you lift the car off the ground? Juha Rasanen, the first we're going to see in the deadlift. And this another great favourite in World's Strongest Man finals. I just Ready. wonder whether his height Good. of almost two meters is going to be a disadvantage. But Good. the Finns are renowned for having Good. incredibly strong backs. He's almost got straight legs there. Good. 320 Good. kilos, over 700 Good. pounds. Good. Look at the bulging Good. biceps. Keeping his arms straight so that all the strain Good. is taken on the shoulders, the back as well just a little walk out with the legs but six reps is a good start for Rassanen the tradition of Scandinavian competitors over the years has been unmatched by any other group of nations uh, Rassanen needs good points here though to get in amongst them 10 seconds to go on the clock that is nine repetitions I'm not sure he's got time to do another one no he hasn't he couldn't do it anyway but nine repetitions for Juha Rasanen. Tremendous performance by the Finn, and that is going to be hard to beat. It's very close for third place at the moment. Yeah. That's why. Are you happy? I'm happy when, if I win this event, not if I, if I win, I'm second. Well, because Bergmanus is an Olympic weightlifter, of great renown. I think his technique will probably be the best of anybody. And that looked easy. This is a guy who's competed in three Olympic Games in the clean and jerk and the snatch. And so this is his bread and butter. Lifting heavyweights off the ground. Up to five. Looking very comfortable indeed. And if anybody is watching who's a weightlifter or an aspiring champion, this is perfect technique. Straight back. Head up, arms straight. Now, can he match Rassanen? Yes, he can. He's got time to do a couple more. And this is a fabulous performance by Bergmanis. He's been in the final before, but I'm not sure he's ever been as high up the table as this. And this will do his chances of taking big points. The power of good. One more for Bergmanis. No, that is it, but he scores 11. Fabulous stuff by the Latvian. That was his event, he needed the points, and I think he's going to get them. His next event, his stone, is much better for other guys. If I step far in this event for other guys, I have a chance. If I, he beat me in this event, I don't have a chance. By this stage, Hugo Girard was a shadow of his former self. Six repetitions for the Canadian. But everybody was still trying. Johnny Perry, look at the effort there. Eight from him. And even Carlson, he'd given up his crown, but he was fighting every inch of the way. So Vickers now in the deadlift. 
We are talking before about Bergmanis being a banker for him this event. What? This guy's a silver medalist what? in World Championship Powerlifting. And this Two. is an exercise Two. in powerlifting competition, the deadlift. This is the only man that can Two. catch Marius Pujanowski, the pole who's leading overall. Two. He's got to get a cracking score here. He's got to go in excess of 11, surely. This is rock steady from Zavikas. Seven. Four more required to match Bergmanis. And this competition has been hot all the way through the final. But now it's really building up to be a classic finish in World's Strongest Man. And he's just juggling that bar up his knees. And that is it. He's happy with nine, with only Pujanovsky to go. And that makes him equal second with Rassanen. Nine is second place. Yeah, it's good. Do you think Marius can beat that? I think no. He not need it. Because he better than stones. But maybe... Well, before this event, Marius Pujanowski of Poland Ready. was five and a half points ahead of Savikas in second place. Two. So it would have to be a terrible Two. performance here to go into the last Two. event needing to win. What? But look at this guy's muscles. Oh, he's absolutely exploding with muscle. Two. I've never seen a strong man so defined in all my days. Two. He's not looking what? too comfortable, but this is solid stuff from Pujanovsky. That is six. Pujanovsky is not giving up. It's not fast. It's not pretty, but it is effective. There's no smiling this time from the pole, but he wants at least another couple more reps to keep the pressure on everybody else and go into the Atlas Stones, the final event, with a bit of a cushion. This is fantastic determination by Marius Pujanovsky. He's not exactly the new kid on the block, but what a sensation he's been here in this final. That is it. Eight repetitions will have to be enough, but is it enough to bring him the title of World's Strongest Man? We'll know very, very soon. Pujanovsky on the brink of glory. For Raymond Bergmanis, a crucial victory in the deadlift because there are two battles going on now as we have just one event to go. Who will be champion, Pujanovsky or Savikas? And who will be third? Four men still in with a chance. If you're going to win the title of World's Strongest Man, this is how you want to do it. In the very last event, in the archetypal strongman event of the Atlas Stones that dates back hundreds of years. You know all about the stones, the five going up to 165 kilograms to be placed on the wall. But as if that wasn't a big enough of a challenge, the heat at the moment is almost unbearable. I am pouring sweat at the moment, and I'm just telling you about it. One of those men fighting for third place, Johnny Perry, staked his claim early on. A fantastic effort. Five stones in 43.86. Well, if either Rassanen or Bergmanis want to get on the rostrum, they know precisely what it is yeah, they have right. to do. Five stones as fast as possible. There's no other way to do it. And Bergmanis may be heading for his best ever finish in World's Strongest Man, Rassanen has competed so well over the last few days, but Bergman is setting the pace. He wants this, and he wants it badly. There's money, there's a trophy, and there's a tremendous amount of pride and a big reputation at stake here. Rassanen very definitely behind the Latvian. Bergman is on number four. Now the big 160 kilogram ball. This is for a place on the rostrum, albeit in third place, surely. Behind Zavikas and Pujanovsky, but Raymond Bergmanis has done it. His best ever finish in a World's Strongest Man final. I'm absolutely delighted for the Latvian. He's 36 years old. Rassanen is disgusted with himself, but look at the smile on Bergmanis's face. Superb finish. That means a lot to you. Uh, I fly in the sky. No. Oh. Unbelievable. I know. It's unbelievable. Oh. Easy lifter. It's bringing it around. Oh, I think about my family, 
Both my kids are both my parents, and I did it. The big two, the last two competitors in this final, Zidrina Savikas. He's only three points behind the man next to him. He's got a chance of lifting the title. But if Marius Pujanowski can lift five stones, the title will go to Poland for the first time in World's Strongest Man history. He's got the physique, he's got the strength, has he got the determination and the will to go all the way? It's all come down to this. Well, it's been neck and neck between these two throughout this final. And first blood goes to the pole. Kuzinovsky's on his way. Zavikas a little bit behind. But what a performance by both men over the last few days. Three victories already to Marius in this final. And that is some effort. Zavikas number two, already the pole on number three. The Scandinavian stronghold of winners in World's Strongest Man is going to be beaten. But will it be this fella from Lithuania or will it be Poland? It looks as though it's Poland at the moment. If he gets this up, 160 kilos, it must feel about two tons at the moment. If he gets it up, he will be the champion. Slowly, slowly. Can he do it? Can he become World's Strongest Man? Yes, he can. Stuff. There is a new champion of the world. Marius Pujanowski brings home Poland's first ever title. What a performer. What a man. Savikas, a bit of an anticlimax for him, but in the end, there was only one champion right from the start. His name, Marius Pujanowski. You are the world's strongest man. Yes. I'm very happy. It feels very good in your heart, yes? Four months is very strong training. Is, yes, first place, I'm very good, happy. I'm happy, second place is good for me. Only one year after injury and second place in the world. Happy. Raymond Spokmanis was happy too. He won the last two events to earn himself a podium finish. And Johnny Perry, by coming second in the Atlas Stones, came fourth. It's a long time since an American's done that well. But it's the pole who's taken the strongman world by storm. I don't know what to think. I did not expect this, although I worked hard for it. I am the world's strongest man. I cannot believe this. I have won. I am so happy, and happy also for my family. Raymond's Bergmanis! So in third place in this year's competition, Raymond's Bergmanis from Latvia, three times an Olympian, but this the proudest moment of his sporting career. In second place from Lithuania, a young man, Zdrunas Zavikas, who surely has many years at the top ahead of him, but standing in his way and everybody else's for who knows how long, Marius Pujanowski. An extraordinary, prodigious talent lifting the Metrex trophy for the world's strongest man. Most remarkably of all, not a single Scandinavian on the podium. Pujanowski is the first Pole to win the title, the first man from outside the strongman stronghold to be champion in 10 years, and he's a man who fought back from the depths of despair to stand like a colossus at the pinnacle of his chosen sport. We'll see you next year. Taking you on a prehistoric safari, a walking with dinosaurs special gets you closer than ever before, next on BBC One. Sadly, since the recording...